We're here with uh, it's uh, it's Master Sergeant Wiseman. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, you know we talked uh, a little bit about the the mission of and I keep calling it the the, the hazmat uh, crew, but you have a more official uh, uh, name for for your team out here. Yeah, we're the uh, 64th Weapons of Mass Destruction Civil Support Team. Um, again, we help and assist uh, fire departments, police departments uh, with anything uh, they need, whether it's communication, um, identification, or analysis of uh, radi or radiation, chemical, biological, those type of things. Okay, so we talked to um, uh, we talked to the lieutenant. We got a little bit of a, an idea. We talked about the mission. Okay. We talked to Sergeant Mesh about uh, about his uh, his vehicle over there and all the cool things that he could do from there. I mean, he talk about communications. He could definitely get it done. That's right. But uh, but the rest of the crew, you guys are over here under this umbrella, and you've got uh, all kinds of equipment. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that you have over there. Okay. Well, over there we have our analytical equipment. We have a hazmat ID, which uses infrared technology. It'll do uh, solids and liquids. Um, it, we've put it on and tested uh, different types of uh, substances, um, whether it's explosive or, or, or narcotics of some kind. We also have a uh, HAP site, which is a GCMS or gas chromatograph mess spectrometer. It'll do 150,000 different chemicals. It's portable, so the entry team will take it uh, into a hot zone or hazardous material area, and they can identify what, what's going on there. Um, we also have what's called an Ahura. Um, uses laser technology. It's kind of point and shoot. We can point it at a container, uh, barring everything safe in its way, um, and identify the chemical. It'll pop up on the screen telling us uh, really? what it is. Wow. Um, we also have our radiation equipment um, for surveying uh, areas looking for contamination or identifying, which we have uh, two identifinders. They check for gamma radiation and neutron radiation. Um, we like those ones because we can just kind of point at it hit identify and it's going to tell us what kind of isotope it is. Now obviously you need to do a lot of training and, and we hope that you never have to actually uh, have a real life situation but uh, how do you get to read the equipment uh, you know uh, without basically exposing yourself to, uh, to nuclear hazards yourself? Well we, uh, as far as training goes the average team member when he comes on or he or she comes on they are, uh, can pretty much expect to be gone around 260 285 days the first year. Um, at that point, uh, sustainment training, we start hitting around 200 days a year, we're gone out training doing this. Um, we go through a basic uh, civil support skills course, and that will uh, train individuals up to uh, hazmat awareness, hazmat ops, hazmat tech, and then kind of give them an idea of what uh, civil support teams do throughout the United, uh, United States. Um, once they're complete with that, they come back to the unit and we start working with local fire departments, uh, police departments, getting more specific in what their needs are. Um, again, we work for them. Uh, whatever type of need they have, uh, we try to uh, get with them. I think a lot of people wouldn't understand that. Wouldn't uh, you know? Because they, they think, well, you know, uh, the guard is a is a military function, and then you know the the fire department is a is a civil function. But that's exactly what it is. Is that it is a is it is a matter of teamwork, and Absolutely. basically you have you have the ability to to uh, to have a knowledge of things that, that a typical fire department wouldn't have knowledge of. Absolutely. Well, see, we're more specialized. The, uh, the fire departments, the hazmat teams, they're awesome when it comes to um, large barrels, uh, a hazmat spill. Um, they know they look and look toward us for more, maybe some of the more specialized ones, a chemical warfare agent, a biological warfare agent, someone that's more specific. Um, and we just add to them. So if we show up and we start finding um, something along those lines, well, we also have uh, what we call our big brothers that we can bring in, some more assets. And it's all about bringing the asset to that local community that they need so that we can help uh, save lives. Now, tell me something. Uh, you know, you're, you're uh, obviously you're in the military, you're in uniform. Um, there was a lovely young lady and some, and some beautiful children over here uh, visiting with you. Is that your family? That is my family. Uh, they're very supportive of me. Um, like we said, we're gone a lot. We spend, uh, you know, an average 200 days a year we're gone, so any chance we have, for the family to show up, um, you know, I, I definitely appreciate it. So, wow, uh, National Guardsman, you're you're just you're a human being. You're just like everybody else. You just right. you're just serving a function to try and protect us throughout the course of the year. Absolutely. Well, we really do appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's such a valuable service. Uh, not just uh, you, you guys, obviously, for for uh, pretty important reasons, we need you. But the whole guard and what you do in our community, we really do appreciate it. Thanks. I'm gonna let you get back over there, answer some more questions for anybody that has questions about some of your materials, but mostly to spend a little bit of time with your family. You've earned it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you.